Good evening, brothers and sisters. Pastor McKim here tonight again to the call to prayer, bringing you the prayer of the night. It's the Monday night call to prayer. And I want to encourage you tonight to join me in prayer. This is the first prayer meeting of the new year. So come on, brother and sister. Thank you for tuning in. By the way, we had a great day yesterday, a brilliant day, first Sunday of the new year. And we had a wonderful watch night, uh, New Year's Eve service as well in the car park. It was brilliant. But yesterday also was a great day, uh, two services in the morning and the drive-ins. Thank you for coming. And also Pastor John last night uh, in the gospel service online but tonight it's the call to prayer it's the first prayer meeting of the new year and i want to bring a little devotion before i pray i've got needs here that i want you to pray for the night special special needs here and we're going to look at them in a minute but before we get down to prayer let me do a reading just a wee devotion for you just for now okay and it's luke chapter 2 Okay, remember Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus up to the temple to present him to the Lord in the presence of God. And that's when Simeon came in, the elderly man came in and he took him up in his arms and he blessed God and then he blessed them. And then he prophesied over the child Jesus. Well, this is the context that we're looking at and this is where we start our reading, okay? So we're in the temple, we're in the presence of the Lord. Simeon has just declared and prophesied over Jesus, okay? And also spoken to Mary as well and Joseph. Now notice what it says here in verse 36. Are you ready for this now? Now there was one Anna, Anna, say Anna, Anna, a prophetess, what about that? A prophetess the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, okay? She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from, from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years of age. What, what about that? 84 years. So she's an elderly lady who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day that's why we're looking at the call to prayer the night through anna okay and prayers fasting and prayers night and day and coming in that instant she gave thanks to the lord and spoke of him you hear that spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in jerusalem praise the lord May the Lord bless his word i love this Are you ready for this now all the characters around the crib around the cradle. Here's the last one that I want to bring to you tonight. And it's Anna, because it's the call to prayer. And this was a woman of prayer. Anna, a prophetess. You got it? Here's Anna, a prophetess, or God's spokeswoman. Verse 36 to 38 tells us several things about this elderly sister that I would like to look at tonight before we pray. Number one, Notice her attractive name, Anna, okay? Number two, her anointed ministry. She was a prophetess. Number three, her aspiring example, eh? Still serving at 84 years of age. And number four, her amazing prayer life, fasting and praying in the temple. And number five, her appropriate timing she came at the right time she had a god moment a divine appointment in the temple night to be honest with you tonight brothers and sisters th there's a sermon in all these statements but i want to look just quickly at them all just briefly her attractive name her name was anna okay anna means grace or gracious or merciful now what what a name to give a daughter grace amazing grace what a name to give a daughter notice she was the daughter of Phanuel. here's another name Phanuel. her father means face of god or vision of god what a name for a father i 
and they were off the tribe of Asher. And we all know about Asher's, the bakers. Well, Asher means blessed or blessing or blessedness. What a name for a family. What does your name mean in God's economy? Do you know that my Lewis means renowned warrior? We give him that name and it's amazing because when he was born, he was born with a clot in the brain. He had to fight a battle, yes, but he won and God healed him of that clot in the brain. Our Lewis, the told us our Lewis would never walk or talk, but he would be a beautiful child because he'd long blonde hair. Well, God healed him and gave him a brilliant life to live. Elliot means the Lord is my God, or with strength and right, or brave and right. And what about this one, Linda? <laughs> Linda means beautiful, oh Lord, means beautiful, pretty, cute and clean. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Pastor, my name doesn't have a good meaning. Well, let God give you another name in his economy. Remember, he changed Jacob Twister a supplanter to Israel, a prince with God. Anna, Grace, the vision of God, her attractive name. Brothers and sisters, can I say tonight, we declare our Savior's name. We are Christians, we are Christ ones. And we bear our Father's name, our Heavenly Father's name, and we share the same family name. Solomon said, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Praise the Lord. Now, number two, we see her anointed ministry. Now, there was one, verse 36, Anna, a prophetess. Now, this is going to cause grief for some people. Listen, she had a prophetic ministry. This wee elderly woman had a prophetic ministry. She had the gift of prophecy. Some may frown upon the statement, but it's there in black and white in the Bible. A prophetess. That's what it says. She was Anna, a prophetess. Some churches refuse to let women pray or speak or they must be silent. But here in God's word, we read that Anna was a prophetess. By the way, brothers and sisters, Moses' sister Miriam was a prophetess. So was Deborah and Hulda and Noadiah. All were prophetesses. In fact, in the New Testament, Philip the evangelist, he had four daughters who were virgins and did prophesy. So now here's the question that I must ask myself, brothers and sisters, if the gift of prophecy or the prophetic gift, according to Paul the Apostle, is for the edification, exhortation and comfort of the church, or verse 4 and 1 Corinthians 14, he that prophesied, prophesies edifies the church. Now if these women had the gift of prophecy. And if prophecy is for the edification, exhortation and comfort of the whole church, then surely they must have ministered the gifts under the anointing of the Holy Spirit in church, among God's people, who are the church. Anna was a prophetess. I'll leave the rest for you to, to question that yourself. But he, she was God's mouthpiece for a specific season in her life. She was God's spokeswoman to help the ministry, to exhort the saints and to build up the local assembly. Brothers and sisters, that's why I see her amazing, her anointed ministry, brothers and sisters. And then thirdly, I look at her aspiring example. I'm trying to keep it short tonight because I want to pray uh, and I want you to be, uh, enjoy this. Notice her aspiring example. Are you ready for this? There was one Anna, a prophetess, a daughter from Newell of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age. So she was elderly and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score years, and uh, four years, sorry. In other words, 84 years old, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. What a good and godly example. Brothers and sisters, she, meant, she maintained a godly testimony. She was faithful in her attendance at God's house. She dedicated her service to God's work 
and she was patient and waiting for the coming of God's Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Yes, what a marvelous example, brothers and sisters. There's something even more remarkable about her example, and that is she was of a great age. She was of a great age. She was a widow of about 84 years of age. So Anna was a widow. Now listen to this. Her husband died after seven years in their marriage. So she became a widow at a very young age. If, if you say she was married maybe about 16, 17, 17, she would have been a young widow in her early 20s. Now here's my point. This young widow could have blamed God, cursed God, and walked away from the house of God. She could have become bitter and resentful, angry and rebellious. But no, she didn't. Instead, it drove her not away from God, but into the presence of God. Brothers and sisters, to look at this old frail sister, you wouldn't think much of her when you come into church. But let the Holy Spirit anoint this elderly lady and let her prophesy and you will hear a word from the Lord that will not only bless, inspire and encourage you, but also challenge your unbelief in his power to use the weak and the foolish things to confound the wise and the prudent. Why did God give her such a gift? I don't know. But could it be that he could trust her and depend on her and rely on her coming into his presence? I believe God doesn't use inconsistent believers nor fly by nights, but vessels of the house. Vessels that he can put the cattle on and trust in. What an aspiring example Anna was to those in church that day. Aye, this wee widow must have been something special for the Holy Spirit to give her such an entrance into the nativity scene and story, you're never finished until God says you're finished. He that has begun a good work will complete it or finish it. Old, yes, aged, yes, elderly, yes, yet still this wee woman was still on fire for God in a simple yet dynamic way. Elderly brother and sister, don't let the devil make you redundant. God still has ministry for you. He still has a job for you to complete in his house and among his people. So fourthly, what about this one? We've got, looked at her attractive name, Grace Anna. Her anointed ministry, she was a prophetess. Her aspiring example, yes, old and yet still serving in the house of God. And also her amazing prayer life listen 84 years old and she still hasn't departed from the temple but serve god with fastings and prayers day and night or night and day barnes the commentator said she was always there never missed the usual times of public worship and for personal prayer in other words, brothers and sisters, she was never absent. She was always in her place. She was a pastor's dream. He could count on her. He could put the cattle on for, a, for, him, for her, sorry. And she was always there in her place. Brothers and sisters, call an extra meeting or prayer meeting and Anna would be the first in the door, first in and probably last out. She loved God. She loved the house of God. She loved the people of God. And she loved the work of God. Especially the prayer meeting. Especially the prayer meeting. Times of public and private prayer. Anna was there. She was there in the prayer meeting. She would also fast. She would also fast. Brother and sister, that's how serious she was. That's how passionate she was. That's how determined this old sister was in her pursuit of the purpose of God in her life. I am the life of our church in the temple. Brothers and sisters, even at 
84 years of years of age, she's still serious about prayer and fasting in the purpose of God. She prayed and fasted day and night, night and day. She was a real powerful, faithful, dependable, reliable prayer warrior in the name of the Lord. What do you think of for an example? What an example. An amazing prayer life. Brothers and sisters, what an example to follow and to aspire after. But her prayer life is important because I believe that's where the gift was birthed. In, her, in the place of prayer. Everything comes out of the prayer life. Everything comes out of the prayer closet. But notice here her appropriate timing as I close. I believe this woman had a divine moment a God moment, a divine appointment in church. That's why the last thing I want you to notice about her is her appropriate timing. She came, listen, verse 30, you think is, she came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph and she also began thanking God and telling everyone in Jerusalem who had been waiting the coming of the Saviour that the Messiah had finally arrived. Brother and sister, here's the appropriate timing, Anna's appropriate timing, a God moment, a divine appointment. As she walked in, brothers and sisters, as soon as she entered the, the church or the temple that day, she knew something was happening. She knew she had a sense of God's presence. The Holy Spirit witnessed with her spirit. Her spirit caught the presence of Jesus. Brother and sister, she knew he was there. She knew he was there. And she coming in that instant, right away, her spirit caught the presence of the Lord in the midst. She, she coming in that instant, Give thanks. She gave thanks unto the Lord, brothers and sisters. And Simeon's prophetic outburst must have stirred the prophetic gift in this elderly sister, Anna. Must have triggered her off, inspiring her to praise the Lord with thanksgiving and to witness to everybody that Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, was in their midst. His presence was there. Yes, his presence was there. The Messiah, the Christ, was in their midst. And she told everybody, he's arrived. He's here. He's here. And he's in our midst. Brothers and sisters, listen, she spoke of him to everybody. She spoke of him to all. She could and would talk only about him. Did you hear me? She talked only and she could and would only talk about him and him alone. No room for tittle-tattle, no room for gossip, no room for rumours, no room for criticism. No, she spoke only about him, Jesus. She praised the Lord, she gave thanks, and then she told everybody about Jesus. Like Simeon, she was a Christ-centred woman with a Christ-centred woman witness so i'm going to close tonight i'm going to close by a quick with a question before i pray i want to ask the question where are the simians i know i spoke about them yesterday morning how do you enter 2021 well simeon told us how to enter and how to leave the presence of god well where are the simians the ones who hear and obey the word of the Lord and the Annas, the Annas, the ones who have grace, who have the vision of God or the face of God and are a blessing to the people of God in the house of God. Where are the Simeons and the Annas who will proclaim him? Yes, proclaim that he's here, that his presence is among us. Brothers and sisters, where are the Simeons and Annas in the church today? Where are the men and women who hear and obey and of grace and of devotion and of blessing? 
Brothers and sisters, where are the godly faith builders? Where are the godly examples? Where are the godly influencers who ignite passion for Jesus, who inspire the young men and women to serve the Lord, to take up where they will eventually leave off? Brother and sister, older brother and sister, elderly brother and sister, can I give you a wee word of advice today, tonight before I pray? Don't retire yet. God has a purpose for you still. There's people in that car park that need your encouragement. There's people watching online who can't get out, who need a phone call from you. Yes, you. Don't retire yet. And, and do you hear me? Don't get your spiritual zimmer out yet. God hasn't finished with you yet. There's young men and women to train and mentor. There's a generation coming after you and I. Yes, and we need men of God and mothers in Israel to show them the way and to point them to Jesus and to let them know when his presence is among us. Brothers and sisters, that's important. And you know, the gift of prophecy, she was a prophetess. And she, listen, Simeon prophesied over Jesus, didn't he? He prophesied over Jesus and, and he told Mary what would happen uh, with Jesus, the light to the Gentiles. But also here is Anna and she's prophesying. She's prophesying. She's giving thanks and she's also letting people know in this church that day that he's here. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy, he is here. Reach out and touch him. He is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know, just before I close, I remember visiting my brother and sister, Margaret and John in Canada when I was young. And I remember going to church with John. And after the service, I was standing waiting for, because John and Dad were speaking to their friends. And I was standing and an elderly lady came over to me. I still remember her name. I was 14, 15 at the time, 14 at the time. And um, she came over to me and she says, son, I have a word from the Lord for you. I never heard of that before. And she said, you will be a Timothy. You will be a learner. You will learn from others. And then you'll be a leader and a soul winner and a servant of God one day. And here's what the Lord says to you. My hand is upon you and I will use you, Timothy. And she gave me a hug and she walked away. My brothers and sisters, I was 14, 14 years of age and my life went haywire shortly after that and my life was messed up i got involved in all sorts of stuff i hit rock bottom did all sorts of stupid stuff and and everything but brothers and sisters do you know something literally literally almost almost 20 years later that woman's message prophetic word came to pass I just looked at the old woman, didn't know her from Adam, but she gave me a word from the Lord. And almost 20 years later, it came to pass. There are people who we need to pray. God, use us to inspire them. Give us a word, not, any, not, a, not God's pathetic word. I've heard God's pathetic word from people who are not even living right. Honestly, I, someone came to me to give me a word from the Lord and they were reeking of cigarette smoke. I and someone else came and they were living in sin, but they're giving me a word from the Lord. I just dismissed it because God doesn't use unclean vessels. Anyway, brothers and sisters, we're going to pray. Let's pray that God will use us to speak in the other's lives. Aye, and to point them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
We have got great needs here. We're going to ask you to pray for young Daly. He's 18 months. He's rushed into hospital and they're testing him for sepsis or meningitis. Also, will you pray for Louise McKnight? We baptized her in our church a few years back and I prayed for her son, Jordan. Jordan's had a terrible accident and he's on the life support machine and they were taking him off the life support machine today. So they were turning it off today. So will you pray for Louise and her son, Jordan? And name of other names here. Listen, there's so many of them. Let's just pray for each and every. I'm just going to show them. They'll be on the screen at the end. But listen, let's pray. Father, in the name of your son, the Lord Jesus, we come to you tonight in that mighty name, that name that is above all other names. And Father, will you hear our cry? Will you forgive us of our sins? Will you wash us afresh in the precious blood of the Lamb? And Lord, will you fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit? And Lord, will you use us? Lord, will you use us for good and not evil? Lord, would you make us a blessing and not a blight? Would you make us an encourager and not a discourager? And Father, will you bless your people? Lord, I ask you for Louise McKnight and her son. You know what's going to happen. You know what's happening today. And Lord, I'm asking you, would you be with mum and, and son? Also pray for that wee child daily. Lord, oh God, please, will you heal that child? And Lord, for all the lists that we have, the names on those lists, so many of them, Lord, will you touch every one of them? And Lord, will you touch, will you, will you comfort the grieving? And will you comfort the lonely? And will you heal the sick? And will you lift up those who are down? And will you strengthen the weak? And will you inspire the saints? Lord, will you use us like you used that elderly couple, that wee man, Simeon, and that wee elderly lady, Anna. Lord, you used them in the temple that day to proclaim Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, has arrived. Oh God, would you let the elderly in our church, Lord, we have a, an elderly congregation. Lord, would you let our brothers and sisters who are elderly, use them for your honor and glory. Use them to inspire the young ones. Use them to inspire young families, Lord, and young couples, Lord, and teenagers and youngsters, Lord, and even the kids, Lord, grown up. Oh, would you use them to inspire and encourage them to follow Jesus? Lord, I ask you tonight, I ask you for the churches all around the land, Lord, all around the nation. Lord, will you bless the pastors and their congregations? And you know, this lockdown is becoming more and more serious. Oh God, will you keep us together as your church? Will you keep blessing the drive-ins, Lord? Lord, bless the people who drive in there and hear your word and worship you and remember you. And will you bless the Wednesday Bible study in the car park? And Lord, will you draw people out, Lord, that they may be ministered to. And also, will you bless the online service, services, Lord, that are going round the world, Lord, going round the nation, going round the province, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for using these services, Lord, to inspire others to follow Jesus. Lord, I pray for my country today. I pray for my nation today. I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, for a Holy Ghost move of God in this pandemic, Lord. I pray, Lord, whether you use the vaccine or divine deliverance, Lord, it doesn't matter. We're asking you to bring deliverance and healing to the nation, to those who have this coronavirus and for families, Lord, that are going through isolation. Lord, will you bring healing and restoration? And Lord, most of all, will you save precious souls? Will you restore the prodigals? And Lord, will you inspire the saints to keep proclaiming Jesus and pointing others to Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, hear our prayers tonight. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, remember the lonely. Remember those who need you, Lord, in a special way. Don't let anybody be alone, Lord. Let them know that they're not alone, that you're only a prayer away. Bless the night, Lord. And Lord, will you bless the rest of the week, Lord. You know what the government's going to do today, uh, tonight, Lord. You know what they're going to do this week, Lord. So, Lord, help us, Lord, to adapt to what we need to do in order to help with the restrictions and to keep your church connected together 
going on, Lord, with the Lord. Oh, Father, we don't want to go backward. We're going forward in 2021, following in the footsteps of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. May the Lord encourage you tonight. May he keep you and may he keep you safe in these dangerous days. But he's still the same. And he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Don't forget to phone around those who are on their own. and Give them a wee tinkle learn. Just encourage one another in the name of the Lord. Amen. And don't forget the book in for Wednesday night with Pastor John and the Bible study in the driving. And brothers and sisters, finally, thank you for your giving. Thank you for your generosity. Listen, without you, we couldn't do what we're doing. But thank you and thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. May the Lord bless you as you give to his work. May he meet your every need in the name of Jesus. God bless you. We we'll love you in the Lord. Keep on going on. You're precious to him. I and you're precious to the pastors of this church. God bless you.